Well, I'm no, uh, what do you call them, fortune teller or soothsayer, hard to know. But if it, if it takes off in, for, in the next 30 years in the hands of Aboriginal people, in other words, instead of the past history of having mo mainly non-Aboriginals, but if the Aboriginal people of, of the committee and of, of membership and so forth um, th th take hold, uh, there's a, a, an endless road of, of good fortune ahead. I mean, the, the whole idea would be to meet other leaders in business, in education, in, in uh, really in, in community affairs, um, to meet politicians and so forth, uh, other than the ones that the Aboriginal people normally meet uh, and from the general community. Uh, I think there's strength in all of this, and I think the next 30 years is great promise for our Aboriginal community. Still, there's a lack of connection in general between Aboriginal people and non-Aboriginal people. I think each live in their own communities, and it took all of this doing for me to I get to know Aboriginal people as friends, as I wouldn't meet anybody else. And uh, I uh, just uh, think that that's going to be coming more and more common. A lot of it is, is handicrafts and so forth, and and pr a production of in of, uh, of of what you'd expect coming from our native community. But I think they were going to get into the mainstream of business, and not that they aren't. But I, I, I think they'll get into much more of mainstream of business, which is a great opportunity. I mean, why not? Particularly in certain in northern Ontario, and it doesn't just have to be in the north. It can be right here in Toronto and so forth, and uh, out west, of, you know, in, in where you normally expect to see our Aboriginal people in their, in their habitats and in their lifestyles. Uh, I think you're going to see more of mixing, which which has taken a long time. I mean, I could go to a lot of my friends, and I say, "Do you have any friends in the Aboriginal and the Aboriginals?" Uh, and I'd probably use the, the the slang, I guess you'd call it slang term, amongst our Indian folk, you know. Uh, and I'm going to get the answer no, because they don't. But I think the time will come uh, when uh, it'll be normal to have an Aboriginal. I mean, I have because of my association with uh, with uh, so many Aboriginal people over the over a lifetime. I'm going to see more of that. Well, corporate Canada has got a lot of assets, you know. I mean, the, the corporate Canada's law, business, every aspect of business is corporate Canada. Now, the Aboriginals are not part of all of that, and therefore, I think that I, going back to my original statement, I think. That, the, uh, that there'll definitely be a better relationship uh, between the general community and the, and, and the uh, Aboriginal community. It, it, needs to, it needs to be integrated better, as, as the words I'm really think would, would handle it best. It has to be integrated better. And, uh, and not to look at someone and say, oh, he's an Aboriginal, or he's an Indian, or he's a, you know. The one I can say I'm closest to is Ron Jameson. Now I've known Ron Jameson through this business right from the beginning. He was on the original committee uh, of a meeting when we put together. I came on board with the idea that there's no integration between the native community and the non-native community. And there's a, a big miss there. And, uh, and so we held it at the, at the time we were living on a farm. The name of the farm was Joker's Hill. And that was named by our predecessor, the reason which I will never know. But the name has got a catch to it. It's Joker's Hill. And at the first meeting, I pulled together everybody I knew. I started in Ottawa, and I pulled together the people who were dealing with Aboriginals. And I started with various, and I met Ron, for, Ron Jameson. Uh, he was with Bank of Montreal, and through that connection. And Ron introduced me to a whole large group of Aboriginals, and we started this first meeting up at our farm, Joker's Hill. We called it Joker's Hill One, which was the first meeting, and then it went on to Joker's Hill Two, which was the second meeting. And people brought in, and we have a whole list. There's the book, Happenstance, uh, that you should not Happenstance. Um, 
uh, something journey. What's the name of the book? Happenstance. Um, and it tells the whole story of how the two communities, the Aboriginal and the, and the, and the non-Aboriginal community have got together. And it's really worked out beautifully. Because I'm a pharmacist and I'm in the retail drug business, Shoppers Drug Mart. And so Shoppers Drug Mart became a, a you know, a, well, an icon. You've used the word and I'll just repeat it, an icon because we're right across Canada, 1,300 stores and started with one. So I guess that qualifies for an icon. And uh, Four Seasons Hotel is the same way. Started with one motor hotel, which was a refinement of the name of Motel. Motel had a, not a nasty relation name to it, but, but it usually was down on the waterfront or on the highway. Well, I said, well, if they can do it on the highway, why can't we do it in downtown Toronto? And so on Jarvis Street, which was opposite the CBC, uh, we started, a, I built a Four Seasons Motor Hotel. Didn't want to call it Motel. We even gave it refinement right away. And it was very successful, and that started downtown motor hotels. And it was very successful. Now you see those things right across the country. So it was very simple. If you see the need, and, uh, and Aboriginals are like everybody else, they can see a need and then put words into action. Uh, I think there's a great opportunity for Aboriginals to create any icon, uh, later to be called icon. Very much so. Yeah, well, that happened at Four Seasons. Uh, <clears throat> there's three of us. Uh, Isidore Sharp, who's the youngest one, uh, myself and Eddie Creed. And the two of us, Eddie and I, started, really started it, but Eddie brought along Mr. Sharp, or Isidore Sharp, because he was in the building business with his father-in-law. And uh, so that's what was the start. And uh, so it, it took friendship, it took relationships, it took all of that sort of stuff. But the fundamental thing was we saw a need um, to do what we were so successful on the periphery of the world that right downtown in the city of Toronto. And it's been very successful, and it's been successful, it's caught on in other cities. Now, whether it caught on because of us or because they've caught it, they've seen it happen in, in other cities in the United States, I, I can't answer. But it, it, it was happening, and uh, Four Seasons became a really national, uh, a national, uh, Trademark, really, you know, it's a really a, a trade on its own. It has been very, very successful. And Four Seasons, you know, spewed, oh, all sorts of offshoots. The restaurant building for, uh, uh, business, for instance, the dining rooms, the food, etc. Now we've just completed the Four Seasons Hotel in Toronto uh, on, on Young Street, facing on Young Street and entering in the, in the back and uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful building. And it was a great, uh, great dining room, etc. First of all, I found it very easy to, to, to discuss things with Aboriginals, and they're willing to try. And uh, uh, so it's not a matter of I discover something new, it was just a natural thing. You don't go into things of what you can get out of it. I mean, I mean it never occurred to me, now right, what's it done for me? That's not in my vocabulary, but in actuality, it's given me a, it's given me a, a host of friends and, and and associations that I never would have had, never would have had, and they've enhanced my uh, coterie of friends. Really, I I I love my relationship with those who I've met, and I I like what's happening right now. I mean, where would I come to this? where we're being interviewed again on, on, on the CCAB and interviewed on our Aboriginal people and so forth. And you know, we've dealt with education and we've dealt with uh, camping and we've, been, and, 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 and we've been dealt with a, a junior business, young people getting into business. Uh, at one time there was no relationship between a, an Aboriginal boy or girl going to a, 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 a bank or something and getting a job. It just didn't happen. And uh, now it does happen very, very often. Uh, the same thing in insurance companies. I mean, everybody hear of it. 
and the insurance company, since we've had several presidents of insurance companies as members of our board of directors, well, the, the word comes down from that top to say, look, wherever we can, let's have a representation of Aboriginal young people in our company, on our bank, in our, in, in our insurance company. And I think it's paid off there. And where it's paid off for me is to see this happening and to meet the people that make it happen. And today is a very good example. I'm meeting all of you for the first time. And uh, that enhances our, you know, our, our, our lifestyle. Uh, it's a nice sunny day outside, and here I am in the living room with several of you <laughs> using the time to, to talk it up, which is great. <laughs>